Hi guys, welcome to my new Q&A video. Today I'll answer most of your common questions and I'm so glad that I finally can make this video because I wanted to talk to you for a long time. So let's begin. But at first I want to show you the place where I am now. So I am now in Spask. Yes, while all the smart people are leaving Russia, I decided to come to my hometown. But I'm here just for five days, so don't worry about me. And yeah, yesterday I was walking here, like in my neighborhood, where I'm supposed to know everything. But I found this really amazing place. It is a car dump. So there are like many old rusty cars and I found it so peaceful. So now I just want to share this aesthetic with you. And yesterday in the evening when I was walking here, I was scared that maybe there's some security or big dogs. And you know what? This place was completely empty, but there was one tractor with one suspiciously working gear light and there was a camera. You see some tractors and all the bus. Look, just like on my hoodie. So yesterday this thing was working and do you see there's like a camera? Yeah, the camera that is filming this place. Wait. I didn't film it, but that man, he's like a guard. He came up to me and said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just walking. I like the aesthetics of this place. And he said, well, as long as you don't steal anything. And I was like, thank you. Let's go. I actually like that I can talk to you now in such a calm atmosphere, even making friends with the guard of this area. So guys, most common question was uh, am i going to move out from russia and the question is of course yes because i wanted to do it for a long time it's like it's not even a question for me and when this all started on the 24th of february i was scared that what if the government closes the borders there will be an iron curtain and i will be stuck here forever but now i hope that there will be no such a thing and since that time thousands of people already left russia and these are mostly middle class it workers people who had some valuable skills i always wanted to do this and i will tell you about my next plans a little later another question was uh, do we have food shortages here in the far east our prices raised like 30 percent some 10 percent prices for like technologies phones laptops although i don't see like food shortages uh, uh, shortages because i don't know like i don't go to you know big supermarkets i don't see empty shelves and guys i must say that i'm really privileged and i had some savings my situation is different from situation of millions of russians of like majority of russian people so i just buy food as usual but uh, of course this economical situation is getting become worse and worse how are you do you feel okay what about your driving license these travels do you have any plans greetings from poland greetings to poland thank you for this question and uh, when i see all that videos and photos i just cannot express the range of emotions that i have it's just helplessness it's just such a big grief i mean i'm used to it you are becoming used to some things after a long time and yeah as for another part of this question i am writing my uh, thesis thesis or whatever it's quite hard it's very it's a very routine work and it's um, not easy for me to sit there in one place and just to do this but i accepted it as my fate and i'm writing it and i hope that i will graduate finally as for my driving license guys you remember i even uh, left that possibility i mean i am not i don't want to do this anymore because for this i had to come here to spask all the time and it felt like going to some backward place dealing with that people it was just a really unpleasant experience so i just decided to not torture myself as for travels honestly 
I am so tired. I don't want to travel now. What I want now is just find a peaceful, a safe place, a place where I will be surrounded by people who I can trust when I will do job that is appreciated and that is contributing to something. What is the outcome and how hard is it to access information outside of official Russian media right now? Well, uh, the outcome um, will not be really good. Russia now is basically closing up, shutting down and uh, really bad times, really dark times are coming to our country. Of course, our economics and many other industries will deteriorate more and more. And uh, as for the media, all the TV channels in Russia are staying owned. So there is no like healthy argument, just like one agenda. Now, we have some independent media outlets online, but some of them were um, banned and they, they are closed now, and some others were considered as uh, foreign agents, and uh, people still can access them with VPN. So, of course, guys, I see all the news because I saw people sending me comments with like the news, what happens. Maybe people think that we don't get information at all. But still, at least YouTube works. Thank you. Maybe they even will not close YouTube because I hear that one reason of this is that uh, it has a lot of cartoons and parents show these cartoons to the kids so it will affect them too much. So thank you, Peppa Pig, for saving Russian YouTubers. Yeah, okay, the sound is fine, the picture is fine too. This is the new place. But one more thing about Russian media is that not so many people are reading that independent sources. Only like thinking people like myself and all the others, they're just watching the TV. The majority of people in Russia watch the TV. They're used to this source of information. That's why they believe it. How are your family and friends doing with all that is going on? Do they worry about you posting? Oh, okay, about my parents. So my dad, he is believes the official agenda, like everything that our TV says, and it is really impossible to change his opinion because, I mean, it's a set of values that have developed in a person for years and people are comfortable with this. Um, when you live all your life in a small town and don't, you know, don't know how life can be, you... As for my mom, she is like the same, she's also uh, my victory was that I convinced her to read independent news sometimes uh, but she still she's arguing with me and sometimes she's saying such words that are not even her thoughts I don't believe that she could make it up she heard it from somewhere and yeah it was useless uh, to try to speak to them but I tried to do what I can and yeah my mom also was worrying about my university she was like don't post anything, don't go to protests or you will be expelled from university, you will have problems. This is kind of fear that all post-Soviet uh, people live with. Not all, but the majority of them. As for my friends, I don't have friends. In Khabarovsk, I have just like two friends. Um, we like go to the cafes and that's it. Most of my friends are online and they left Russia and I realized how damaging it is for my mental health to not communicate with people in real life but really what I came to like okay I went to an English club in Khabarovsk uh, there we talked in English there were three other guys two of them are also going to move out to Russia so I don't know I just exist I hope that when I move out I will be in a new environment and find new people guys look what I found on my pants when I was going through all these bushes. Do you have such things in your country? In my childhood we called it Kaluchka. And the next question, how did your family come to live in Eastern Siberia? Well, first guys, let me be a little annoying because we, in at least in the Russian language, we don't call it 
Eastern Siberia, we call it the Far East, because there are federal districts, there is a fed Siberian federal district, which is like in the middle of Russia, and Far Eastern federal district. Even though, if you look at this on Wikipedia, it will say that this is like a larger Siberia, but, you know, this term is very broad, but we usually say just Far East, and yeah. But maybe in Western terminology, you can call it Eastern Siberia. So, my ancestors came here a little more than 100 years ago. So, my dad's parents are Russian and they came to the Far East in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, somewhere from the Aryol Oblast, this is what I know. And uh, from my mom's side, so my mom's mom, my grandmother, she is Ukrainian, and her mother, my grand-grandmother, was among peasants who came from Ukraine to populate these territories, because in the beginning of the 20th century and in the end of the 19th century, there were programs that uh, like uh, gave people land in the Far East. They even formed many towns and villages here with Ukrainian names. For example, she lived in a village called Krasny Kut, which is, I believe, in Ukrainian means a beautiful corner. And this village still exists here. And uh, she spoke Ukrainian in her, in her house, and that's why my grandmother knows some Ukrainian words. Yeah, as for my mom's dad, he is Belarusian and he came to the Far East actually not as a, like a, a peasant from f seeking for land, but a little later, like in the 60s, he was a constructor, a builder. And in the Soviet times, there were jobs by distributions. So uh, he was distributed to build houses in Spask. That's how he settled down here. So resuming this all, I have Russian, Ukrainian, and Belarusian roots. But I mean, this all is quite uh, close to each other. I mean, genetically, we are all uh, one branch of uh, Eastern Slavic people. Moving on to the next question. If trade with China increases, do you think there will be any economic benefit to your home and region? Well, no, I don't think that there will be any benefits because, guys, China is not going to help us. They're acting in their own interest. I completely understand them. So uh, maybe it seems to you that if we live here in the Far East, we're like have many connections with them. But how many people who I know travel to Japan? Like it's just one hour plane to Japan, but maybe like 2% of people living in Primorsky Krai, in Khabarovsk Krai, are able to go there because it is so expensive and you need to get visa, which is also really hard. As for China, well, to, to go to China was a little more, a little easier when Yuan was just 4 rubles, now Yuan is like 10 rubles and I mean, basically, it's just another undeveloped uh, broke Russian region, so maybe logistically somehow it will help them, you know, to transfer goods from Vostok. but honestly, I don't know much about this topic. A couple of days ago, I read about some polls that suggested an increased popularity of approval of the government. What is your impression? Best wishes, Sebastian. Um, we have to understand how these polls are being conducted. So. Imagine you live in a state of fear and an unfamiliar number calls you and asks your opinion or what is even better comes to your apartment. What would you say? So another thing is that the organization that are making these polls, do you really think that they are able to make something independently? Another thing is that concert that happened in Moscow recently. You guys were asking me like, how is it possible? So many people came there. And again, we have to understand how things work. In Russia, there is a public sector which consists of like budgetary institutions, as we call them, schools, universities, libraries, hospitals, many different institutions. And often they just are invited to such events. Like, if you don't go there, you will have problems with your boss, and you know, people live in the fear. And uh, they, they came there just uh, like 
checked in that they came there and left as soon as they could. This is how things are done. Of course, there are some people who still believe it. But honestly, guys, I'm so tired of trying to figure out how many people support this, how many people don't support it. Another question was about how often I see the Z symbols around Khabarovsk. Well, quite often uh, you can see them on the city buses, you can see them on the beautiful building of the scientific library, they put that billboard. And uh, when I was walking in the market in Khabarovsk, I even saw t-shirts. I began filming this and the saleswoman, she was like, do you mind? And I asked her about these t-shirts, what does it mean? And this is what she said. Ah, and when I see this, I feel so... Helpless. Do Russians prefer Western media or Russian media in terms of music, video games, movies, shows? Or do most Russians know English? Well, most Russians don't know English because just not many people travel, it starts in schools not really professionally. Older generation, maybe like 5-10% know English. Among younger generation, it's a little better. So. Yeah, I think in terms of music, it's 50-50 because there are Russian musicians, there are foreign musicians, and you know, tastes are really various for different people. So, in the same probably for movies, but guys, Russian movies, maybe there are some good directors, like there are like movie festivals, okay, I cannot say that everything is so bad. But the majority, when the industry is not developing, you can see it on many different things that this industry is producing. They're funding like military films. On the average, what I see, Western movies and just foreign movies, they are more popular. Like if you go to a Russian cinema, not anymore, because now I believe there are no foreign movies at all, but before February 24th, probably 80% of uh, films in the cinema were uh, foreign yeah, and Russian movies. And of course, uh, foreign movies are dubbed into Russian. We used to have all the, like, we used to have Spotify, Netflix, like uh, Hulu. Russia was integrated into the Western, into the global culture so much, and now we are closing up. As for video games, I honestly don't know any Russian video game. Metro 2033, is it a Russian game? I don't know, let's discuss it in the comments. Yeah, I just need more comments under this video. And don't forget to put like so that YouTube knows that this video is interesting and uh, promotes my video more. Honestly, guys, I'm not... Like, I don't watch movies at all. Yeah, this is my confession. Am I the only one? I can watch like one movie in, in two months and even though I like studied cinema history, I know all these like Lumiere brothers because I have some professional deformation. When I watch movies, I begin to analyze all the frames, how this was shot, like basically I do this when I watch any YouTuber. When I took a break from YouTube two months ago, I managed to De detach from this and I was just enjoying videos. Yeah, I don't watch films. This is probably a trauma caused by Russian films. I don't know what I do in my free time, like watch TikTok, watch YouTube, read books sometimes. Wow, come on. What guess we have? The thing is that I don't have a mirror on my camera, on my phone, so who knows, maybe there were many other things behind my back. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's try to get to the bus. Oh my god. Actually, guys, I can hear prepared. Quality content. Dogs. <laughs> There's just a jar. 
on your channel i always enjoy when you show all the relic buildings the things that are rusty or in a bad state of repair what is about these things that draws you to them what makes them interesting to you well i think that today's location is a good illustration for this question i just like the aesthetics of uh, such rusty places i'm not a gamer at all but I have played some video games that inspired me. One of them is Dishonored, all these steampunk aesthetics, rusty things. And another game is Life is Strange, and particularly there was an episode called Junkyard. And when I found this place yesterday, I had such a flashback to that game. And uh, as for the graffiti also, there was a question why I like graffiti, is that when I was 12, I played a computer game called Mark Echoes Getting Up and it is a game about graffiti, you have to find different spots. There were elements of parkour in the game and it inspired me so much. I just, after that, I can say that I have like a trained eye. My eyes are searching for new graffitis. And sometimes it's not really good for me because uh, this makes me to notice all the city elements like the Z billboards and so on but one important thing i have to say is that maybe i created a wrong impression about myself there was a comment that natasha loves her hometown spask and is showing it like with love and she cares about it but the thing is that i don't live in spask for five years already i moved to kabarsk when i entered the university there i lived in moscow for a while i lived in the united states this is not what my life is about like all these rusty places it's happened happened because i was often coming to spask and in spask i feel so easy to feel so comfortable and i know that i will be really interested myself to film these places that's why i'm like yeah i can film this i can film that and that's how i showed you all the like countryside my neighborhood fishing but in general my lifestyle is pretty urbanized like i live in kabarovsk in the city center i go to coffee shops so this is what my life is about. What will help people in the West better understand the way people in Russia think and maybe why? Yeah, it is a really good question. And you know, because my channel used to be called Ya Russia and I created it to tell you things about my country, it felt to me that understanding Russia is my job. But now it became so unbearable for me to try to understand this. But this is how I see it. Imagine that you was brought up in a broke, post-Soviet, dysfunctional, traumatized family. And for all your childhood, you see just this. In schools, in universities, polyclinics, in any institutions, you are being treated really rudely. And if you are speaking up, people think that you are a freak because just shut up. Nobody asks your opinion and uh, if you're smiling and laughing there's something wrong with you because what there is to be happy about don't you have a 20 years mortgage for one room apartment in the outskirts of kavarovsk so it feels to me that this feeling of helplessness of devastation around you this is what many people the majority of russian people grow up with and there is this idea that nothing can be changed it's impossible to change anything so don't even try my hometown is in alaska i've always wondered how russian people feel about alaska and how it was purchased yeah sometimes there are jokes like alaska go back to your motherland but you know these jokes they have never been like too serious and um guys i'm so happy for you like <laughs> i'm so happy that uh, you live now there on the territory of the united states because if it wasn't sold many years ago your region would look like uh, that abandoned soviet uh, north pole cities like pivek and so on good for you I am happy for you. I envy you. Is climate change discussed in Russia? Is it even a topic? Have you noticed anything different? 
uh, in the environmental climate is the weather getting weirder well i have not noticed that weather getting weirder when things are deteriorating in the country when all the important issues are hushed up and not talked about of course there were conversations about this on like higher level but if we are talking about recycling my favorite recycling about like five percent of russian trash is being recycled all the other trash being uh, is just uh, buried under the ground or burnt in the special like polygons and there are many polygons in all around all russian cities and this is a big ecological problem for us i don't know if the government is going to do something about this I, at least you know it's not our it's not just custom schools in some yards in moscow there are like this uh, bins where you can leave uh, trash of different kinds but in khabarovsk i we have such a thing but it's l like one thing for the whole city well there are several of them but sometimes you cannot for example recycle some particular plastic like number six or number five in spas there is at all no uh possibilities to to recycle so yeah people just don't know much about people don't even think about this i was so terrified when i realized it after going to the united states where we recycled even in our dormitory there was a question about how now russian youtubers can get their income and of course i'll answer this question so youtube still is monetizing my channel it only doesn't show mon uh, monetized uh, ads to people in russia but most of my audience is foreign so anyway youtube still shows ads on my videos but i cannot access that money yet because I have some issues with my Russian bank account. So I'll access that money, but later. The same works for Patreon. It still accepts your pledges, but I just decided to put it on hold and it just being kept on Patreon. As for PayPal, it doesn't work in Russia at all now. And I also created a crypto wallet. If you guys want to donate me in crypto, there is a link under this video. And yes, this is the end of my video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a long one. I hope that you liked the aesthetics of this place. Please let me know if you want to see something more like this. And yeah. There were many other questions that I unfortunately didn't answer today. Maybe I should make another Q&A video. So thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support that you give me. I really appreciate this. And I wish you lots of love and have a great day. Goodbye. Пока-пока.